by definition, phobia is fear. So Islamophobia is the, the fear of Islam. Than anything affiliated with Islam, including Muslims. And we are seeing it today on airwaves, where media commentators, where government officials, where religious leaders are all bent on making Muslims and Islam look like they are the threat to America. Not a group of individuals, but as a religion, that it is threatening American society. There is this fear based off of misperception, uh, and oftentimes that misperception is based off of one of two things, flat out ignorance or completely wrongful information. Wrongful information. It's really all around. There's not one source. It's an industry that is exploiting the, the fears and the hysteria from 9-11 now, and they're riding that wave to continue their anti-Islamic rhetoric. Particularly when people haven't met a Muslim before, I think that their primary um, education about Islam and Muslims comes through a television screen or a film screen. You have documentaries like Obsession, like the new anti-Semitism of the 21st century, that are painting Islam and, and Muslims as the threat, not only to America, but to modern uh, civilization. We're at war with America, period. And we're going to win that war by convincing enough Americans through the spread of fear, insecurity, and terror to change their ways. On the le a level of Hollywood, when we constantly are bombarded with images of gruesome, uh, bloody, barbaric Muslims, and we see it in TV series such as the most recent series, 24, where you have um, a nuclear strike in Los Angeles, terrorists operating within our own neighborhoods. One of our engineers, a man who we now know is a terrorist named Habib Marwan, was running his own covert organization from within our company. A show like Sleeper Cell on Showtime, which um, has gone out of its way to try to offer more three-dimensional portrayals um, of Islam and Muslims, but it's still within the overall specter of terrorism. The show is called Sleeper Cell. The Muslim experience is defined through the lens of terrorism. You know what to do? Allah Wakbar. Allah Wakbar. And again, they're talking about a very specific group uh, of extremists in a very specific place, but the conclusion is, is that this is a worldwide movement against uh, the West. This is similar to Nazi propaganda against Jews that they're only talking about a specific group of Jews, but this is a Jewish campaign against Germany, uh, or a Jewish campaign against the West. There's also a concerted effort by certain individuals who do not want to see Muslim Americans um, be actively integrated and participating within the political and social and civic spheres. It is their full-time job, it is their profession and their calling in life to cast any kind of suspicion or doubt um, about the credibility and the integrity and the patriotism of mainstream Muslim American organizations and leaders. Prove to me that you are not uh, 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 working with our enemies. And I don't, and I, I know you're not. I'm not accusing you of being an enemy, but that's the way I feel, and I think a lot of Americans will feel that way. We have in the example of Keith Ellison, a Muslim who is the perfect example of integrating into American society through civic engagement by becoming a member uh, of Congress. When Keith Ellison uh, decided to give his oath on the Quran, and the reaction to that was a reaction of what's going to happen to our civilization. It was perceived as an erosion of the American civilization, which is exactly typical of Islamophobia. Even though um, Muslim Americans are working with the highest levels of government agencies, despite that, um, most people just don't hear that story. And that is because, in many cases, the government officials that are working with Muslims choose to keep that relationship in the closet. When we look historically at, at the times when our country has violated human rights on a, on a massive scale, so often it's the targeted minorities the ones that are vulnerable, the ones who have been always the targeted uh, of negative stereotyping, those are the communities that most need government assistance when communities are filled with fear. Fear keeps you from 
getting the information and the facts that you need for the strategy that you're going to have to have mm -hmm. to get this country out of the crosshairs that it so fears being in. So if we're going to fight terrorism, we can Islamophobia is a, is, is a huge boulder in that road. I have a deep love and affection for my country. Uh, there's no one who is more patriotic than I am. And so, you know, I don't need to need to prove my uh, patriotic stripes. When somebody of that stature can be um, subjected to what can only be called a racist and xenophobic question, then we know that Islamophobia is alive and well and breathing in this country. Because if a member of Congress can be treated with that kind of disrespect and that kind of suspicion, then what chance does a store owner have? or a school teacher, or a physician, or a student, or a student, or a student. We studied the Romans, and then now we're studying the Islam civilization. Then the movie Not Without My Daughter came. When we got to that part where they start, where he hits his wife and all that stuff, they start saying that I'm going to hit my, uh, my wife when I grow. They would call me, like, mostly cuss words. I wouldn't say hi to anybody. I would barely leave. I, I would be a little stressed out, you know. Muslim students in high school uh, or in, in college or even in elementary school is probably facing a lot of anti-Muslim and anti-Islamic rhetoric right now. We have seen in collecting our uh, hate crime data over the years that uh, unfortunately uh, Muslims and Middle Easterners and people perceived to be have been really targeted with horrific crimes uh, that are motivated by deep hatred or animosity or fear mosques being um, shot at and vandalized. We see students being um, constantly being harassed and sometimes um, subject to discrimination. They were all like, uh, uh, oh, so this is Islam? This is a peace? They say you're a terrorist and they say you're the problem for 9-11. Killing innocent people and everything, is that, is that, uh, is that what your religion teach, teaches you? The whole classroom shouting bomb the Muslims. I got in a fight in school because of that. He's like, yeah, like, oh, 9-11, it's all because of you guys and stuff. The teacher just didn't care. They were saying, bomb Muslims, bomb Muslims. And I didn't know that they they knew that I was a Muslim. Oh, you're uh, Osama's little brother. Like, what? And he, he hit me in my face. And then the, the teacher tried to have, like, a discussion about Muslims and stuff. And she basically started talking bad about us as well. Talking about, yeah, they do. Like, so what if they believe, like, oh, blowing up people is all right? And I was like, and, and she wouldn't let me talk, like, to explain myself, like, as a Muslim. So he just told me to be quiet the whole time. We cannot uh, generalize an entire community, an entire religious group, to be terrorists, to be foreigners. And that's unfortunately what we see in our hate crime reports. That kind of sentiment of saying, go home. And there's nothing worse you can experience as a member of a society or community than to be told you don't belong here. Actually, it puts us in a virtual internment camp. So it doesn't have to have a gate and defenses and guards, but virtually you find yourself in an internment camp. It starts with an attack against Muslims, then it ends with an attack against all immigrants. So Islamophobia is just the starting point of something that is anti-American, that is hurting all of society, not just Muslims. Americans are scared. When people are scared, they get stupid. And they do things that make no sense and actually increase the problem. You see it in our foreign policy. And I'm afraid you may come to see it in our domestic policy if we don't head it off at the pass. The idea behind everything that, that MPAC is trying to do with this Truth Over Fear campaign is to empower and educate Muslim Americans in local communities so that they use the voice that they have been given and take pride in their religious identity and that they use that for the best possible end. We are America. We are part of this country. We pay our taxes and we demand representation. We need to fight back uh, in an effective way through more engagement with the rest of society. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. We better get rid of our fears of it if we're going to engage it in a way that increases our safety. It will be only a matter of time until perceptions are created and the perceptions become reality. We have to fight fear by truth. We have to fight hate by love. As the Quran says, deter what is evil by what is good until your worst enemy becomes like your close friend. I 
all I gotta say is respect us. Because we are just like, as we've said, we're students. Just like you, we do the same thing you do, so.